Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you are new, a warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you also. And if you find the content that I uh, provide every week uh, useful, and I've been getting some really nice comments, thank you to all of you who have been commenting saying that the uh, videos have really kind of improved your trading and helped your results. Um, you know, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow trading colleagues. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it helps the uh, YouTube algorithm, and it is a free way to support the channel just by liking and subscribing. And uh, our trade process is really to combine fundamental analysis with technical analysis to really find the best trades uh, available and understand really bargains and uh, where prices are likely to go in the medium to long term. So um, getting into the week ahead and some of the news uh, flows, looking at uh, trading economics week ahead, <clears throat> zoom in a little bit. And um, we're going to pretty much skip this bit here because it's more to do with um, with the uh, reporting, uh, the quarterly re reports, but what we need to focus on is really the central banks in the US and Japan will be deciding on monetary policy. So that would be interesting. Why is it interesting? Because central bank policy has a direct effect on uh, currency value so um, and direction. So on the economic uh, data front, the US uh, Eurozone, Mexico and South Korea are releasing the first estimates of first quarter GDP, that's going to be big for really the US and the Eurozone, which the US is expected to uh, actually grow with their uh, with, the, with their um, GDP, which actually could be a potential buying opportunity. Um, Eurozone is actually expected to be in the in the negative, actually um, go into a recession. But uh, we'll get into the euro um, dollar uh, trade as um, there has been uh, some developments in that euro trade. Um, and uh, really the, uh, the the the, uh, the sentiment around it but yeah first quarter gdp is is really important other updates to follow include the us durable goods orders and personal income and outlays the eurozone business survey and inflation so inflation is also important uh, japan retail sales industrial production china nbs pmi survey and australia inflation data so that will also be um, important as well so um, let's get on to the technicals and starting off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index. And the Dow Jones dollar index is really just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies. And the dollar, surprisingly, um, has actually been on the decline. And uh, with all the good news that's been happening around the US dollar, um, uh, it's still, again, a bit of a surprise because you would really expect the dollar to continue uh, going to the upside from here. And uh, let's look into some, uh, some, some news articles on this. And we've had US jobless claims fuel recovery optimism. So new unemployment claims fell yet again and are edging closer to pre-pandemic levels with the recovery or with the, sorry, economy opening up um, and uh, more and more each day. We are anticipating a series of 1 million plus monthly payroll gains as that could be enough for the Federal Reserve to call a, a substantial further progress and start the tapering progress or process, I should say, before the end of the year. And that is actually positive uh, for the dollar. And like I said, the dollar's had really positive news. So it's been a bit um, head scratching when it comes to why the dollar has been you know, declining over the past few weeks. And um, part of it is to do with the euro reflation trade, which I will get into when we get into the euro section. But if you still believe that, that there is value in the dollar, we've come down into a really nice uh, fresh demand zone right here. So this potentially would be a buying opportunity. And what you want to see is really the dollar, uh, the DXY um, kind of turn up when it comes to the price action is confluence. If it starts to you know go bullish, um, then you're going to go on to any of the dollar uh, pairs um, in order to uh, look for buying opportunities on the dollar. And uh, we really haven't had a pullback for a very long time. We've kind of cut through a few uh, demand zones and price doesn't tend to you know move in straight lines, right? We tend to move in waves. So the point being, 
you're looking at this for example prices go up price go down price go up pullbacks etc right this is basically what happens so if you understand that and you understand that we've had this you know this this large move for the past uh, couple of weeks since the beginning of april really no pullbacks at all um, a pullback is due yeah so if a pullback is due where is that pullback likely to occur these are really the two zones it could occur so um we could if we do see some positive um uh, first quarter data for example that might be the trigger for some optimism around dollar buying and then we could see some upside potential if you're looking to continue to sell the dollar in you know in the medium to short term and you believe that the dollar will get weaker then that zone of supply between the 91 if prices do come up in there and the 90 sorry 9160 and 9180s um would be again confluence you wouldn't necessarily be shorting the dollar index you'd be looking for short trades um on the dollar yen dollar swiss for example but with this as your confluence and just looking for uh, prices to kind of reverse in these uh, zones as confluence so um dollar positive really positive um economic news but just really disappointing um price if you're if you're a dollar uh, buyer but doesn't mean that the dollar is going to continue falling remember that if the financial institutions believe that there is some you know dollar value then this is actually a bargain price this is what you would call a bargain price and if you actually look at um, you know the beginning of the year 2021 where price the low of the dollar to the actual high yeah between a low and a high price this would be an absolute bargain for the dollar and it was proven because prices went higher this is an expensive area for the dollar why do we know that because there's really been no demand for the dollar at that price in between a bargain and expensive area is actually fair value right so this is fair value and we are below fair value anything below fair value would be considered cheap or as we know bargain prices so um pretty much this could be a nice buying opportunity for the dollar if you want to continue getting long on the uh, dollar um uh, and believe in dollar strength coming into the uh, near future moving on to the dollar yen dollar yen again um, benefiting really from uh, some uh, dollar price weakness i don't really want to call it dollar weakness because fundamentally um, the dollar is you know miles ahead of, of of japan and in fact talking about japan uh fundamentally we've got uh japan actually going into uh imposing new state of emergency as covid19 cases rise so japan is preparing for a short spell of covid19 restrictions and its biggest cities over a week long holiday that begins this weekend in an effort to halt rapid uh, rise in cases so a state of emergency has been declared in tokyo osaka hyogo and uh, kyoto i think that's how you pronounce it um uh, prefectures between the 25th of april and the 11th of may this period includes golden week one of japan's biggest public holidays when many people travel which falls on the first week of may and unlike previous states of emergency in january and february the government is expected to request the complete closure of venues serving alcohol and large shops excluding supermarkets yeah so the public will be asked to work from home and uh, etc and where schools but um where possible but schools will stay open so um again it sounds like it's quite severe which will have a knock-on effect potentially on the uh, japanese economy going into the future so with that going on and really the us um having actually still a decent uh, vaccine rollout program and the economy going getting on track pullbacks in price yeah are generally or should be seen as buying opportunities so the, really the first area to look for buying from a demand zone perspective is actually this going to be this 106 demand zone around here and uh, if prices can come down even further that's going to be really nice if not probably what you're looking for if you would do want to be a buyer of the dollar yen um after especially after this move like i said prices tend to move in waves right when you get large moves like this that don't pull back you have to have a deep pullback you just, it's just has to happen so this is just a pullback when you look at this you know this trade uh, this trend and if we don't get any kind of demand zone then what you want to do is wait for demand to create itself a pullback into that zone there and then look for 
<clears throat> some long trades if that's your uh, your preference if you're thinking that you want to be a buyer of the japanese yen let's say for example risk is off where uh, money flows into safe haven assets and safe haven currencies uh, like the japanese yen then you're looking for a move back up to that zone there that 108764 before looking at any kind of uh, short trades uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss um, I'm in this trade and uh, just waiting for prices really to try and move a bit higher I do think again the move that has uh, happened on the, uh, the the dollar is quite uh, extended we do we are due a pullback right we are due some sort of pullback at some point hopefully the pullback does happen at some point soon if not then it's down to really the next demand zone because when um, prices are seen as a bargain down here then or anywhere down here then what you want to do is capitalize on the up move the risk reward will be really good on that and it's just about holding these types of trades but the timing of the turning is the is the problem for that that really uh um or the conundrum for all traders right nobody knows exactly where the turning points will be so and if they did then um there'd be a uh, trillionaires by now so we just manage our risk see where the um the uh, the turning points are made a little bit of profit i'm actually up on this trade as i enter multiple positions here so i'm still in one of my uh, my trades stop loss below this low here and let's see what's um you know what happens and hopefully we get some sort of double bottom with and prices move to the upside if i lose this trade it's no worries it's not a loss really because of the fact that i've made some money on the upside so um, let's see what happens but if you haven't got in this trade now is actually a quick pretty decent area to look for long trades if not prices you know down into this demand zone um this one uh zero uh, point nine zero cent level also as well keep your eye on the uh, first quarter gdp right so first quarter gdp if it comes out as expected or even better than expected then you can expect really prices should want to go you know higher if not if it comes out really disappointing then in fact the dollar may want to you know continue rolling over right let's see what happens but the forecasts are uh, for for uh, actually a positive um uh GDP growth for the dollar. Swiss franc wise, we've got some supply zones above, so some lower highs and lower lows, one right there and really one right there. So again, pull back into this zone here if you do get it and you wanna be a short, you know, you wanna get short on the uh, dollar and uh, buy the Swiss franc, then that's the, uh, that's the area to look for any kind of short trades. Dollar CAD and the dollar CAD has really just been chopping around. Um, uh, this week um, to the upside and the downside. I've always said that I do like this area for from a buying perspective, from a technical analysis perspective, from a fundamental perspective. I'm not really too keen on this uh, this currency pair, um, even though there are calls for the dollar um, uh, dollar CAD to actually reach the one two two levels by um, the likes of uh, Citibank and uh, ING banks. So. Um, I think the path of least resistance is probably continuing to the downside. Yeah, Canadian strength. And there was some good uh, Bank of Canada news. They reduced, um, I think it was uh, uh, bond purchases. So, uh, and then there's now talks of potential rate hikes and deflation actually came out really well um, above expectation as well. So um, uh, again, Canada firing on all cylinders, just like the US, but uh, price is moving in the right direction for, for Canada. So um, again, if you do want to be a buyer, then really and truly for me, I think it's probably the higher level. This level's been used a few times. Not too, um, uh, don't really like when levels have been, uh, you know, touched uh, several times. And even this level's been touched several times. So for me, I think really, if we do get all up here, not sure whether, whether we will anytime soon, but if we do, then that's a, that's a sell. Um, and any kind of buying opportunities for buying the dollar against the CAD, that's a really nice uh, demand zone there. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar. Uh, US dollar and prices again have come up into this supply zone, um, you know, gone sideways for a little bit. I do think that there is uh, some demand right here. Demand, and you've got a little bit of demand here as well. 
So um, buying right now not, might not be the best you know, choice if you wanna be a buyer with a New Zealand dollar, wait for a pullback into that area there before looking at getting along that 70 cent level. If prices do come up and break through these supply zones, then maybe wait for a pullback into that demand zone before looking at getting long. And uh, again, that's if you want to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar. If you want to be a buyer of the, um, the the US dollar, I think now is a really, really good time to look for a short trades. The New Zealand dollar is actually um, a commodity currency and should do well in a risk on environment. So hence the reason why you're, you're seeing this over the past couple of weeks. But um, if I was going to go along on the US dollar, it's really not going to be against something like the, uh, the New Zealand dollar. But if you did want to, you know, you saw a technical opportunity, and there are always going to be technical opportunities, but it doesn't mean you should take every single one of them. But if that is something that you do want to take, then that's the uh, really the short trading. You have to expect the dollar to kind of increase in value in the US dollar I'm talking about. Moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar. Um, again, I think the, uh, the expectation for the British pound is actually um, for a higher um, uh, pound dollar valuation somewhere around here. So if you're looking at buying opportunities, in fact, that is hidden demand. So if you get a pullback into this uh, 1.378 level, then you're looking at a nice buying opportunity if prices can come back down into that zone there. I do prefer this area here as a potential buy. It's got the um, uh, support and resistance confluence in there. Um, but if you want to be a buyer of the uh, the dollar, then really I think this 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 higher level of price can come up to here. That's a really nice technical zone to look for any kind of uh, uh, short trades. And um, when we talk about the um, the pound as well, going on to fundamental fundamental analysis, a surging demand signals strong rebound for UK economy. So official data shows rising retail sales and acceleration in hiring of new staff as lockdown measures ease. So the UK uh, on Friday showed signs of rebounding strongly from the coronavirus as companies uh, reported surging demand and official data highlighted consumers splashing the cash as lockdown measures eased. So, um, you know, the, uh, the, the UK economy really kind of firing on all fronts <coughs> when it comes to, um, you know, uh, growth. So again, would you want to be a buyer of the pound against the dollar? For me, it's not really um, a pair. Again, I'm interested in uh, two kind of strong currencies, um, or economic, or fundamentally, I should say. But um, price-wise, obviously, the dollar is uh, suffering a little bit, but we could see some upside dollar potential. So it's a bit more of a difficult read for me personally. I think there are definitely easier trades out there. Now, moving on to the euro dollar. And before we get into the euro dollar, um, uh, technical analysis. I just wanted to mention that we have um, until the 30th of April um, before we close the private Discord mentoring group. And you can really kind of access the group for less than really a, a cup of coffee a day. Um, £1.64 actually as low as 99p a day. And um, what we have and what we provide in the uh, Discord room is really mentoring. You can watch all the videos on YouTube you want, but trading um, involves feedback. Any skill involves having you know somebody who's been there and done it, giving you direct feedback. And um, what you want to do is uh, really kind of join a really friendly group, a supportive group. None of this um, nonsense where people are you know really kind of disruptive and um, and giving you uh, really kind of bad advice and come in and really kind of learn the skill of trading. Um, also, you get trading videos pretty much every single day, if not every day, every single other day. So, um, and they're really informative, everything to do with fundamentals and technicals, as well as access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet. And uh, you can check out all of the content that I provide as well, free content on um, my uh, YouTube channel which is here and um, before you join to get a bit of a taste of what we provide in the uh, private mentoring group so back to the euro dollar analysis and the uh, euro dollar really has been a surprising quite a surprising um, uh, uh, currency pair and especially the move up right the move up is hasn't really been expected because we've had really good news 
um, at every kind of turning point that we kind of expected over the past couple of weeks, um, from unemployment to um, you know to inflation, and literally all we've seen is the dollar get weaker and weaker, and the euro getting stronger. So is it because um, you know the, the dollar is weak uh, or, or the euro is strong now all of a sudden? And really, it's um, to do with, and I've made a video on this earlier. Um, earlier today or over the weekend and it's to do with the uh, euro reflation trade and uh, what the euro reflation trade is or um, uh, to kind of kind of break it down in the sense is that um, there is there was a, a, a central bank um, there was a central bank meeting on Thursday and really the outcome was no surprises but from the ING analysis, there was more euro dollar upside to come. Yeah, and um, looking ahead and beyond today's ECB meeting, the euro dollar uptrend, which started this month, should remain in place. Plenty of bad news has now been priced into the euro. The currency has been trading with a persistent risk premium over the past few months, and despite the uh, recent rise in the, in the euro dollar, it screens cheap based on our, in this, on their short term financial fair value model model by around one point five percent. And the euro zone economic data is likely to pick up in the coming months as the pace of vaccine nations increases so improving eurozone data should translate into some upside for the euro equally important the dollar strength observed during the first quarter of this year appears to be fading and the currency is no longer reacting positively to solid us dollar data points which is basically what i've been saying it really wasn't reacting to it and what's i think what really is um, is happening or what they think is happening is that this suggests that plenty of good news has already been priced into the dollar and coupled with the federal reserve presiding over deeply negative us front end real uh, rates uh, this should weigh on the currency so a lot of the um positive uh, dollar news has been priced in and uh, there's no really way to kind of quantify that right you can't see that in real time you have to just take the trades as you take the trades and even though they're going against you the market apparently is pricing the good news in for the dollar already but not pricing in the good news for the euro so again it's by the rumor so the fact right and what i mean by for example a reflation trade is that You've got, uh, oh, sorry, I say re reflation, revaluation trade is that the euro is now in focus. So if they're buying the euro here with the expectation of um, the uh, euro uh, going higher due to um, economic data, vaccinations, etc., then in fact the euro looks a bit cheap down here, regardless of what's happening, you know, with the uh, with the dollar. So. Um, Another article really on that is uh, this. So it says the euro capitulation trade is in full swing on vaccine bets. So a sudden rebound in the euro and the sell off in bond havens are, are forcing investment strategists to play catch up on rising expectations for European growth. So it's not just retail traders that have been caught offside it's the institutions as well right um as the currency climbs towards 120 some of the investment community worry their projections for the months ahead look too gloomy goldman sachs uh this week revised up its three-month forecast to 125 from 121 meanwhile pmb paribus uh piset i think that's how you put um uh, pronounce it and Manu Life Investments are predicting German bonds uh, yields will turn positive by December for the first time in two years and there's a lot of interesting in information in here I'll just read this as well quickly the shifting dynamics so the recovery in the single currency is set to continue according to Charles uh, Dybel uh, a money manager at Medio Lanham, I think that's how you, what it is, uh, who says that it could reach 125 by the year end. So his quote is the euro has been an underperformer against the dollar and a sterling laggard in terms of the vaccine rollout, which is the reason why when we were going short around here, we went short up here, we went short around here, we were going shorts, taking these shorts, right? Because of the differential between the divergence between the US growth and the uh, the, the euro lagging behind but now what's being priced in on this move to the upside and potentially up to 125 yeah is the fact that the euro now is potentially recovering 
right? And if it starts to recover, you don't want to you don't want to buy the euro once it's recovered. The smart money have already started to make their money, right? Down here. So this is where you buy the rumors, sell the facts. So now, if you do want to be a buyer of the euro, if you don't want to be a buyer of the euro, it's waiting for now pullbacks uh, to get long. For me personally, I don't think I'm really going to be trading the euro dollar as there is a lot of conflicting um, information regarding um, you know, the, the euro and the data has to also support the narrative. This is one thing that you have to, you can't just blindly start buying the euro because you read it somewhere. You have to, the euro has to actually start performing because the rumor is fine, right? You can buy the rumor, yeah? But if the data comes out and the dot and the euro, it starts to struggle and they have setbacks and there's another outbreak and et cetera, et cetera, then the rumor really doesn't have any legs. So it's a bit of a chance that you're taking buying the euro, especially against what would be considered a positive, uh, you know, economic um, uh, uh, or macroeconomic uh, dollar right from macroeconomic perspective fundamental perspective the um the dollar is doing really well so there are better trades and there are easier trades to buy the euro against and you really want to you know buy the euro against an, a currency or a country that isn't doing so well so um when it comes to this actual trade markets don't move up forever of course they don't they move in waves so if you do see prices pull back yeah, then you can actually look for some euro buys. Yeah, but again, don't be surprised if you do get a deep pullback. Yeah, if you do get a deeper pullback um, on the dollar. So keep an eye out for the, um, uh, again, the first quarter data. Right, first quarter data, that could be the catalyst that actually sends the uh, the uh, euro dollar to the downside but again where would a cheap place be to buy the euro if you're looking at the beginning of the year which is up here to the where we are the high and the low right so this is the beginning of the year this is january this is the high of the year this is the low of the year we're actually at what well, again what is known as fair value so again if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar which the institutions do do they want to be a buyer up here or they do do but they want to wait for maybe a pullback down into one of these demand zones before looking at getting long so again that's your there's your uh, your choice if you do want to you know trade this pair but very interesting pair it has been a really interesting pair to to kind of see what's been happening i do think prices will eventually start to roll over but um, in the short term, but again, over the medium to long term, if the data does support the euro going longer against the dollar, then that's the path of least resistance. Moving on to the dollar, um, sorry, the euro yen and the euro yen. Again, um, for me, I think this is probably starting to be a buy now. And uh, I was saying this in our, um, in, our, in our group, that the euro yen now, I haven't traded this for, a very long time but now it starts to look like a decent uh, buy especially if you're again if, we, if you're looking at the euro is is potentially going to strengthen then any pullbacks against a weaker currency for me now start to look like a buy so if there is a pullback there brilliant if there is a pullback here then i'm looking for some buy trades and if prices don't pull back and they go higher this would be with this would have created a demand zone so then you're looking for pullbacks like that that's what i'm looking for in uh in from from this currency pair like i said i haven't traded this pair for for a very long time but now that the uh the fundamentals are dictating uh, where money potentially is flowing into then this is uh how we pick our currency pairs every week um if you do want to get short on the euro then this is a decent time to look for any kind of short trades but again you really have to see the uh the japanese yen um either a risk off environment or the or, or the uh, euro start to kind of sell off due to bad news or the japanese yen start to increase in strength due to good news moving on to the australian dollar us dollar and again two uh decent currencies prices really didn't go anywhere this week again economically um both are quite strong the australian dollar is projected to kind of reach the 80 cent level within the next um you know quarter or two 
but in the meantime no one knows right where prices are going to go from a short-term perspective but if you do want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar that looks like a bit of a bargain and if prices come back to the 75 that would be an even better bargain if you expect prices to go up here within the next you know three to six months um, from a again a, the US dollar sell this is actually a decent area again looking at where fair value is from the beginning of the year which was probably around this is probably the low of the year to the high of the year right there so we're at again fair value so decent but you really want to trade at the extremes right you want, you want to trade at the lows and the highs those provide the best buying opportunities buying at fair value isn't necessarily great if you're um uh, if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, obviously, if you're looking to buy the US dollar, then that starts to become decent. You've got enough downside potential if you consider where your risk is. Um, but again, not really a currency pair that I'm interested in trading. Uh, two kind of conflicting currencies. Uh, Aussie yen. I am a want to be a buyer of this currency pair. So waiting for a decent pullback if we can get one down into one of these zones before looking at getting long. Um, again, in the risk on environment. Yeah, the Australian dollar should do better than the Japanese yen. So if we can get any kind of pullbacks, that would be nice for a re-entry. If prices move higher, not to worry, just wait for any kind of pullback into a demand zone before looking at getting uh, long again. If you're looking at getting short, then this is probably the area where you want to look for short trades. There's an, uh, some hidden supply there. All right, that's hidden supply. So um, again, you're looking at probably the best area would be up above this 85 area as a fresher area of supply from here really nice so um, that's really where the short trade is and again you really want to see some if prices come up here you want to see some bad news for the Australian dollar or uh, good news for the Japanese yen and finally gold looking at gold so um, again with dollar weakness um, coming into the market and the dollar and the gold moving inversely we have uh, we had prices go you know higher right um so we can delete that but the question is is how likely is gold continue to move higher i do think it can move higher if inflation does get out of hand but with um with really the, again positive news around you know the dollar um, unemployment etc growth in the the market um i think this is probably just some sort of again fair value uh pullback so again if we're looking at the, the high of the year to the low of the year yeah we've really kind of pulling back to what is probably known as fair value that's all this is and then looking for potential short trades if you want to get short on gold um, we do have, I think, an article here which is talking about gold erases gains as U.S. data refuels recovery optimism. So metal seems to shrug off new uh, or news of Biden capital gains tax plans and outflows from gold-backed ETFs slowed but not stopped. So gold fell, um, I guess, in the short term uh, amid rising bond yields after strong U.S. economic data refueled optimism of a global uh, recovery. So I think this is probably one of those articles where it talks about gold selling off but it was just for the day but if you're looking at the bigger picture then it doesn't look like gold really kind of sold off did it this is like the 23rd it was written so that was pretty much just for that day but if you understand the bigger picture um you know you'll, you'll understand that with the, the with there being global growth and money kind of flowing into other assets and probably out of gold because gold is typically seen as a safe haven asset when things are you know in a bit of there's a lot of fear a lot of doubt a lot of uncertainty um and that has kind of gone away for in in the us so and, and really kind of around the world so why then would you look to buy gold this is the this is the question not saying that you should or you shouldn't not financial advice but the question is why would money then pile into gold the only other reason why money would be piling into gold is a hedge against inflation so um and dollar inflation so if you do see inflation being a problem right so rising inflation which it is at the moment um i would say it's it's creeping up i wouldn't say it's a problem but it's definitely creeping up but if the narrative starts to change and the, the you see start to see the federal reserve um you know hiking rates 
and inflation still rising as they're hiking rates and I think gold is going to be a decent buy so let's see what happens with that but until that day comes um, for me I'm really not trading any of the precious metals there is a bit of a demand zone right here as well in case you did want to be a buyer uh, of gold or a seller at the moment again looking for supply zones around now for potential short and this would again coincide with any kind of dollar strength if the, if the for the third time I guess if the third if, if the if the first quarter data, I've got to get it out. The first quarter data starts um, is 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 really good, um, or as expected, and there's growth, and you start to see that the U.S. dollar start to strengthen. Then that is going to put some downward pressure on gold. It definitely will. Well, you say definitely. There's no definites in 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 a currency land, but the probabilities are that it it may put some um, downward pressure on gold but uh yeah that brings us to really the end of the weekly analysis guys i hope you enjoyed it again don't forget to like subscribe share and if you want to you know take the um the uh the course and really understand and get in-depth fundamental and uh, technical analysis um then join the discord room as it closes on the 30th of april and uh, i'll see you and look forward to working with you if you do join so take care and until the next video all the best